And we'll get over to this. So today, we're learning some more information about the local man who claimed to have a bomb outside the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. yesterday. Floyd Roseberry, who we told you before, is from Cleveland County, right in our metro area here, facing two counts. The first is threatening the use of a weapon of mass destruction. The other is threat by explosives. While in court today, he said that he was having a little trouble understanding what was going on because he has not had what he calls, in his words, mind medicine in two days. I want to get over to moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd, who is joining us live today. I know there's so many topics we can talk about, Chuck, but we wanted to focus on this bomb threat situation since it does have a lot of local ties for us. I mean, this hours long standoff yesterday, I can only imagine it really rattled D.C. that's really just been through a whole lot lately, especially when you consider the events of January 6th. Look, this studio is, you know, I, I just look to my right over here and I, I see the Capitol and and uh, I was in this uh, in this building during January 6th. If you live and work in and around Capitol Hill, you cannot help but feel this elevated sense of concern. You're constantly walking around. You see, and, and, and this has been, and look, just last week, the Department of Homeland Security uh, upped a new terror threat warning, warning of a rise in concern of domestic terrorism, grievance-based, particularly among um, some uh, on the right. The COVID restrictions in general have sort of added to this conversation, and we've all seen all of the social media stuff. But yeah, I, I, would, I would say this, that if you live or work in and around this area of Capitol Hill, you just have this heightened sense. I mean, look, I was here for 9-11, and if you lived in New York or Washington right after 9-11, you felt uneasy, sometimes walking around the streets. You get a little bit of that feeling just around this neighborhood of Capitol Hill and the same thing, because this is now sort of the, the, I think, the second major incident since January 6th, third one if you count January 6th. So there is... This this idea that there's an extra threat out there, I think it's more acute here, that's for sure. Yeah, I can only imagine. And uh, Chuck, I mean, yesterday we spoke with a former assistant FBI director who said it's not our imagination. We are seeing more of these these type of threats and, and in some cases attacks. Yeah. Um, he talked about, you know, the role that social media is playing in some of this. I mean, is there anything underway officially to try to tackle the situation? Look, there is this, uh, you know, when Biden came into office, he pledged to work harder on this domestic uh, terrorism issue uh, than the previous administration. And there was some questions with the previous administration that 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 those that said white supremacists uh, and, and some of this far right stuff was was the, the greater threat. There was some political, I would say, softening that you would see among the previous department that ran DHS that wanted to downplay those threats. So you're not seeing a downplaying of them. Uh, you're seeing sort of a similar effort to try to infiltrate, try to get into these social media groups and monitor them in the same way we did back when we were worried about Al Qaeda inspired or ISIS inspired uh, homegrown terrorism here. They're using some of the same tactics um, and that's why you've seen, and every once in a while, you'll see them arrest somebody. Obviously, January 6th has been their focal point to, to, to get as many folks in, in that respect. But there's, I, I think that this is something that's going to become more and more a, a part of our everyday threat assessment that we all deal with if you're on that beat. And unfortunately, I mean, I mean, that's just unfortunate to hear. I mean, I hate, I hate to hear that, and, and I hate to, yeah. you, know, you know, hear your take about how much anxiety there is in the nation's capital about this as well. So, uh, Chuck. Well, look, we have this social media. I mean, look, there's, I mean, look at what you said about this guy. He didn't take his mental meds. I mean, we have a mental health problem and, and not a good way to deal with it in this country. Social media stirs it up and we have a political divide and you have leaders that are actively trying to stoke the divide. It's a dangerous stew for mentally troubled people. Yeah, something needs to be done. Chuck, thank you as always for your insight. We appreciate it and, and hope you take care too. You got it. And we'll remind folks at home to tune in to Meet the Press this Sunday, 10 a.m. right here on WCNC Charlotte.